All right, this is Mobile Gamer Nerd, and we are back with another Raid Shadow Legends free-to-play Mystery Shard only video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Fire Knight's Castle. Now, this, this video is going to be a somewhat quick explanation of each stage of the Fire Knight's Castle. We're not going to do each and every stage, but we will kind of give you the teams that you'll need to progress through the Fire Knight's Castle to see which ones you'll need to get through it. Now, a couple things to note about Fire Knight's Castle is that you need people who can hit more than once on their A1s is usually the best. It could be an A2 or A3, just know that it'll be on a cooldown, so you can't do it every single time. The other thing is that you're going to need heroes eventually that can reduce the healing of the Fire Knight or reduce turn meter of the Fire Knight. Those are really the main things that you have to worry about. Now, the first time you get to this fight, you're probably not going to have too many heroes that can do this. You're probably not going to have a lot of heroes at all, to be honest. Now, figure in the beginning, you'll probably have something more along the lines of, say, Kale. All right. You may have, I don't know, War Maiden, possibly Spirit Host, possibly Valerie. Oh, look, what a surprise. They're all heroes that are farmable. Let's just say these are the team. These are the heroes you've got. I'll go into builds a little bit more when we get into stage 20. But for right now, in the beginning, this is going to be an easy fight. Obviously, my, my heroes are all level 60. Now, the whole point of this is they just need to get the cast the, uh, the Fire Knight's shield down. That's really it. Kale can pretty much handle it in the beginning. They don't need a lot of turns. We're going to try not to auto the last fight, just so I can kind of show you, you know, what you'll be doing here. And then we'll slowly progress our way in. So these are all, all farmable heroes. You have to get five hits. So there's a couple things you can do if you're having trouble. You can wait and try to save your skills until you get to the boss and hit it with everything you got that's got more than one hit and then beat them. Now, in this case, we just got to, you know, basically smack them a couple times. One, two, three. You've got five heroes. More than likely, you're going to hit them five times and then you whoop his ass. There you go. Now, my heroes are obviously a lot stronger, so they kill them. That's it. Really, you just make sure that you can get that shield down quicker. Now, like I said, this is going to be the quick version. And then we'll slowly work our way up. Now, this team here, which is all farmable, and you have your starter here, whichever one it is, that could be any one of the four starters. So it could be Kale, it could be Galek, it could be Aethel, it could be Elhane. It doesn't really matter. All of them have some sort of a hit that will take the shield down. I would say that Aethel would be the best in the beginning because she has a three hitter on her actual A1. So literally, you could just constantly do the three hits. All right. Now we will progress to stage five. So now... We're going to start moving into five. I don't know where the actual changeover begins, but this is the team we're going to use. Now, once again, they are very strong. So here we go. Let's just get through this. Auto it. And this is a good team to kind of help you get through most of the game, to be honest. All right. This team is pretty awesome. And they're all easy to get. You can farm them all and get their skills maxed out, which is what you should be doing in the beginning of the game anyway. So now we're at the Fire Knight again. Now... We still have five. All right. I don't know the exact time it's going to start increasing, but it will start increasing. Now, if he hits you, it's going to end up lowering your HP. So it destroys HP when he attacks you. So you really don't want him to attack as much as possible. At this stage, it doesn't really matter. You're probably going to be able to beat him pretty easily. And then you have this skill on Kale, see, a four hitter, which you could literally just boom, and now he's open. Problem is, is that his turn meter is now all the way at the top. So he's about to get another turn, which means he's about to put his shield up again. So we might want to speed up our teams. Try to get an extra turn in. We increase speed. Now we can smack him. Boom, he's dead. Once again, this is very, very high-end heroes <laughs> in a low-end area. So let's progress further. So that's stage five. Now, we're going to start seeing some issues. I would say if I had to pick a stage, it would be stage 10. So we're going to start here. We're going to keep going with this team specifically until we fail, essentially. All right, so we're going to auto this and see what they can handle and what they can't handle. And I'll show you where my team specifically started to change, and I believe it was after 10. I don't believe it was any time before 10. 10 is pretty much a, a spank fest. That's it. You just run into this dungeon. And you're just going to spank it. Literally, that's it. 1 to 10, beat him up, smack him up. Most of your heroes will be able to take the shield down before anything actually happens. So we're going to leave this on auto just to see what happens. So now he's at 10. So he does jump to 7 
around, I think, six or seven. I'm not sure. So at this point, you're going to start seeing that you might not be able to get this shield down in time to do damage. All right. Now, remember, these guys are level 60. All right. So they're strong as hell. And they still might have a problem here because they're just not going to be able to break that shield down every round. And he's going to be able to heal back up. Now, more than likely, if we can get the shield down, this guy's pretty much toast. All right. But as you can see, Kale can, can take it down. We do have our blessings, which means we're getting extra hits. We have War Master. So there are things that are going to adjust this fight right now that you won't have in the beginning. So this is going to be a lot harder. Now, Kale is able to do four hitters and then two hitters. And that's really it out of this team. Like You've got War Maiden that can do a two hitter once in a while, but it's not enough to break this guy's shield down. Now, like I said, we're strong, and they still were able to do it. But this is where you're going to start seeing problems. So instead of dealing with what I just dealt where I got hit, what you're going to want to start doing at this point in the game is start looking for other heroes that can maybe either decrease turn meter or get three hits. That's really it for right now. Turn meter isn't as important from 10 to 15. You're basically going to be looking for heroes that have three hits and don't die. So you're going to want to keep healers in this team, all right? So we're going to take out Spirit Host. Oh, we're going to add a team. We're going to move to the next stage real quick. Let's go to 11. From this point forward, you may start having issues. So like I said, we're going to take Spirit Host out. You can leave him here. That's fine. Uh, you're going to start looking for heroes like, I would say Crimson Slayer would be a normal hero that you could find to replace anyone really now if you're having trouble getting to the boss itself in this in this scenario basically where we're at now i would take out war maiden and then possibly put spirit host back in why would i do that well one because she has removed debuffs which you get hit with speed debuffs in this fight all the time all right the other thing is that she's really good at staying alive in any scenario. So she doesn't die because she just keeps healing herself. Now, Crimson Slayer is going to be able to hit this this guy multiple times, which is going to make this a little easier. So let's start and kind of see. Like I said, this is kind of the progression of the Fire Knight's Castle and where things start to go awry for most players. I mean, you're going to see that, like, even at level 60, I'm going to have fights in here that are going to wreck me, probably. All right. We're kind of doing this on the fly to see what happens. But... There's going to be times where it's going to get rough. And I'll show you a couple variations of teams that you can use and kind of little tricks you can use to get through this. So this is a regular team. Like the only one in here that's kind of, you know, a one-off would be Crimson Slayer. And you can use literally any hero that has a three-hitter. If you have Aethel, you can use Aethel. Uh, who else does three-hitters? There's actually a uncommon Ram. I think he's Skinwalker. That has four hits, I believe, on his A1 or his, one of his skills. So even someone like that could do this. Say now she hits three times, he hit four times on his main attack. They're able to break that shield down, and it works. There you go, three hitters. See, now he heals back up, and now you got to get that shield back down. So having heroes that do one hit is not optimal at this point. You're going to start seeing it, and this is going to look easy, but you're not going to have this easy of a time. Yeah, that's right. Smack him in the face. Now, as you can see, they're still winning. This is stage 11. Now, we're going to go to stage 14. We're going to fast forward. Because 15 is really when you start getting quests. And as you can see, see how much time this took, all right, to beat stage 14 when I was first there. So we're going to go in with, with this team again. And we're basically going to keep going until you start to see the progression of what's going to happen here. Now... I would probably recommend if you pull someone that has a three-hitter outside of Crimson Slayer or someone like Crimson Slayer, I would put that person in here in place of more than likely, I would say Spirit Host. I would replace her and get another three-hitter in here because that shield ain't going to drop. All right, it's just not going to drop. So this is when it starts getting a little bit rougher. As you can see, they're already having a little bit of trouble in the waves. And I think around 14 or 15 is when you're going to start getting those wave issues where you're going to have trouble getting to the freaking boss, never mind just beating him. And the other thing is that the heroes that normally beat the boss are not heroes 
that are good at clearing waves. Usually, it's not it's not 100%. I'm just saying normally. All right. So see, now they're going to start doing a lot. You're going to start seeing a lot more speed downs, which is why Spirit Host could be good in here because she removes those debuffs like you just saw, and then Valerie basically increases them. They're still able to get that shield down because you have Kale that has that four hitter, and you have Crimson Slayer doing those three hitters. And this is not an endless fight, unfortunately, because eventually he's going to destroy your HP to the point that you cannot continue. So trying to elongate this fight to win is probably not your best option. See what I mean about Crimson Slayer? She just rocks that shield down because she has a three hitter on her A1. And I, I could honestly waste my time spending with like builds and stuff on these on this team, but it's obvious that they're way stronger right now, so you'll be doing this with much weaker heroes. So you're going to have to focus on which heroes you're bringing in here. But this is a team that can do it at least up to 14. But you're going to see they're going to heal up. I mean, we're taking a little bit of time here, and we are level 60. So you being whatever level you are at this time, you could be level 40, you could be level 50. There's a lot of things that you could be. And it's going to be a lot harder. Hopefully you, you've been following my videos, and by this point you already have a six-star Kale who's got all his masteries. That's the hope here, because that's what you should be doing in the beginning of the game anyway. So he was, should be about the same, and you should have been at least trying to maybe farm some of the other heroes that are currently in this team outside of Crimson Slayer, because you may not have her at this point. Luckily you're going to get a lot of pulls between the beginning of the game and this time, when stage 14 actually becomes relevant. Now, I did do some different versions of this. I want you to see how long this takes. So this is 2 minutes and 53 seconds. So now we're going to retry this. All right, We're going to edit the team, and we're going to take her out, and we're going to take this guy in. Now, when I did this, I did this with Apothecary in Diabolus' slot. Apothecary is way better because he has a 3 hit on his A1. You can do it with someone like Coffin Smasher. Coffin Smasher has a three hit on his A1. He's not very strong. He's really honestly only there to get that shield down faster. So now we're going to try it without Spirit Host and bring in him. And you can see, you'll start to see the difference as to what having an extra three hitter in here is going to, is going to accomplish. So the team we just did before when we put Spirit Host in, that's for a team that really is stronger attack wise. And can hold their own. This is more a defensive team that can last longer and drop the shield faster. They may not be as attacked, you know, they won't be as strong attack because they're not going to have the 50% increase from Spirit Host. But this will help you get through it. And this is actually how I beat Fire Knight on stage 15, is that we just kind of pushed through it and I used this exact team except Apothecary was in it. And then I'm going to show you another group of heroes and another way to beat this that will get you through some of these. We'll maybe we'll switch to 15 after this one. I don't remember if 15 works with the team that I'm going to show you because I'm trying to show you the lower end versions before we get to the high end version of this fight. And then Affinity is going to play a part in this. Not so much Fire Knight, actually. Fire Knight, really what it does is, is for your turn meter reductions. That's the part you're going to have trouble with. So if you don't have someone who has a turn meter reduction in at least one of each affinity, you might start having some trouble past 15. But once you have the basic idea of how Fire Knight works, it's not really that bad. So the last fight took us, what, two minutes, right? And the other thing is he decreases attack. So essentially, even if the shield doesn't come down and he hits you, you're going to get less damage taken. But... I don't know how much faster this would be or slower, but this is literally just so you can get that shield down easier and get a heal reduction in there. See, Crimson Slayer does that. There's a couple other heroes that do have heal reduction. There is a uh, free Ogren that you get that can do heal reduction if he the boss is healing more than you can actually out damage. So that's an option if you want to build him. I would probably say it's better to just build your heroes with attack and try to blast through it a little bit better and get someone with a turn meter reduction because that's a little bit more valuable than here reduction at this point.
but it can't hurt to have a heal reduction hero. Now, this team basically won't die. If you put Apothecary in here, it's essentially an unkillable team. I mean, they're just going to go. I think the first time I beat these stages, like 14-15, I think it might have taken me 10-15 minutes because of how slow my heroes were and how weak they were, but they just wouldn't die because Apothecary would heal up somebody, Valerie would put the shields up, and then the other guys would just take care of the boss. That's it. Now, there's no real strategy in this other than having heroes that do three hitters because in the beginning, you're not going to get that hero reduction very often. Crimson Slayer very rarely hits it in the, when you're at this point. But as you can see, they can handle this. Now, we're going to go to stage 15 real quick. So let's see. Stage 15. This is where stuff starts to get a little dicey. Now, I don't know if I have a team set up in here for 15. I think I only have... All right, I only have Spider 15. I'm eventually going to get that set up. So we're going to take the same team into 15 and see what happens. This is when the fights kind of took a little bit longer. And then after this, we'll try another team to kind of show you what you should do at this point. Because there's a couple options here. One, obviously you get heroes that can decrease turn meter and start making it so that the hero that the Fire Knight can't get his shield to go back up. That's the optimal set. However, I don't know what heroes you're going to have at this point, which is why I'm showing you a couple different options of how to do this. So this option is really just... Three hitters, at least two. You want at least two. If you can get a third three hitter, like Apothecary as a healer, or someone, say you're using Aethel as your starter, then Fire Knight might be a lot easier with Aethel in the beginning because she can do that three hitter, which will knock the shield down. Those three heroes can get the, the shield down every single turn. But if that's not working, you have a second option, one that includes Kale, and a few other fun poison heroes, which you can replicate with almost any poison hero, which is the good thing. So it stays at 10, which is good, because you still have him with doing the four hitter. He'll do the one hitter. They'll do something stupid right there, like where she hit him with the heal reduction before the shield's even down. But you're going to start to see that the HP that he heals may actually be stronger than the damage you can do. That could happen to you on stage 12. That could happen to you on stage 14. It could happen to you on stage 17. I don't know. I don't know what heroes you're using, and I don't know how strong they are. You could have built the best team ever, and they're just really strong, and they just blast through Fire Knight until you know stage 17, 18. But it will happen. Regardless of what you do, how you play, you're really not going to be able to one-shot this guy unless you're you know obviously putting a ton of time and money into this game at that point. But this is the free-to-play version, so we don't want to do all that. We just want to learn how to beat the fight. So essentially what's going to happen here is shield needs to go down, and then you want to be able to get your turn meter reductions while the shield is down. Now that can be tough. Some of the main things that stop you from that happening are speed. If your speeds, by stage 15, if your speeds aren't at least 150 to 170, like you're starting to push that kind of threshold, you're going to really start to see some issues here. You're not going to be able to get enough turns. He's going to get more turns than you, and he's going to get that shield back up way faster than you can even think about taking it down, and the fight is just going to go on forever, and you're never going to beat him. Uh, the other problems that can happen, accuracy. If you don't have accuracy on turn meter heroes, you're not going to be able to land your turn meter reductions. That's going to be a problem. The other thing that can happen is he just can overpower you because your heroes aren't defensive. Fire Knight requires heroes that are a little more defensive if you don't have a lot of healing in your team. Now, we do have Valerie for shields. See, look at this. We're already starting to see that HP destroy come into play now. All right. Luckily, these guys are level 60, but you won't have that opportunity. But Valerie can keep you guys safe. A couple other things to note. You could get a, here, a couple of heroes in here that have heal reduction. If you have at least two, I would say. Because one may not get it off every time. If you have two, you have a higher chance of that heal reduction going off and making sure that he doesn't heal. Because this is almost like Spider in Spider's Den where essentially if you let him keep healing, you're never going to do enough damage to take him down. He's just going to constantly regenerate and regenerate every single turn and you can't destroy 
him. <laughs> so you're going to want heal reduction. You're going to want turn meter reduction. And you're going to want three hitters or two hitters or heroes that do multi-hits, heroes that get extra turns. There's all kinds of things. And now you can fake that by putting Relentless on because Relentless gives you extra turns. You can fake it by doing Reflex uh, gear that gives you cool lower cooldowns, making your heroes do those skills more often. There's, there's plenty of ways. There's also heroes that can actually reset your cooldowns. Those are good heroes to have because if you have four hitters on like like Kale, if his four hitter goes off, you could reset the cooldown and then hit him again with a four hitter the next round. So heroes like that are good. Valerie's good because she increases your buffs. She keeps you with your whatever buff you have up. If you have block debuffs, if you have attack up, defense up, whatever it is, Valerie can help bring that to a two round or three round instead of whatever your original cooldown was. So that's one way to beat this. The second way to beat this is by using poison. So what we would do is we would take him out, we would bring her in, and another option here is we can take her out. Because remember, the point is we want poison. Now, these are just three champions that are really good at poisoning, and they do their job well. So let's see how this goes down with stage 15. I haven't done this, I haven't done this fight with specific team, with specific heroes in a while. But this was an option. We did use Apothecary in here instead of Diabolist. That was what it was. But the thing is that Diabolist is more likely what you're going to have in case you lose the opportunity to get Apothecary that early. Because I, I got him super early. It's basically like hitting the jackpot when you get him. But Diabolist is just as fine as far as speed lead and doing some at least mild crowd control work. She does have a sleep, so she can at least possibly sleep one of these ads and make it so you don't get hit by everything. Big thing here, though, is making sure that your Valerie, in this case, has a shield set on because you want that shield to regenerate every single round so that these ads don't kill you while you're in the process, okay? So this is the second option. Goal here is essentially to bring heroes in that still do a, a, a one or two attacks on their A1s or A2s, but... They also poison. So we have Frozen Banshee in a Relentless set. We have Grave Chill in a Poison set. Kale is in Lifesteal. Frozen Banshee can get extra turns. Her A1 is two hits. So if she gets an extra turn, that's four hits. If Diabolus puts up a speed boost, it's possible you could reset Frozen Banshee even quicker because you have the speed lead. And then... She comes in and poisons while the shield's down. So you, act, this is where accuracy is going to start becoming a problem. As you can see, we hit him a couple times, and we don't have a lot of poisons. It's because my accuracy is not good enough. And I'll, I've said this in many of my other tutorial videos when I show these heroes. Their accuracies are trash right now. Like, I really need to get accuracy banners on almost all of these poisoners. But she's actually pretty good. Grave Chill's better than everyone else. So what the point of this team, just so you can understand is that you just saw the shield went back up, but the poison basically hit him for the amount of damage that he healed. And that is where the poison comes in. If you can hit him with enough poisons to where you can do more damage than the heal, this is a viable strategy. Now, obviously, if your accuracy is not good, your accuracy, not accuracy, <laughs> accuracy is good, you can do this quicker because we would have landed more poisons. Also, we haven't gotten an extra turn from Frozen Banshee, which would have helped. So there we go. We have another poison from her. Hopefully, Kale gets his four hitter off. This is a situation where you would want him to get that four hitter off actually now before the shield goes down because the other heroes can kind of handle it. But there you go. You saw all the damage you just took. Now, this is a little bit of a riskier strategy because, as you can see, I don't really have Apothecary in here. So it is possible that Diabolus might not you know, get her, get her crap together and she could die in this situation. But it is a viable option. That's a lot of poisons. We're starting to see them pop up. All right. But as you can see, they are winning. That's the good news. They are winning. Diabolus isn't maxed, obviously. She's at level 28. But she is 6-star, and she has six, all level 16 gear. So we're not going to pretend like she's not kind of good right now. She is low in defense. This is why I said you should have somebody with high defense to come in here, because they do get killed. My other heroes are set up for clan boss. So they are really they're just soaking in defense. 
To be honest, at this point, I would probably even recommend that you bring in another defensive hero that can hit two or three times instead of her. But the other, the other side of it is that she can actually speed your team up. I'll know a little better once I see her at level 60. But there she goes. She's dead. So now the other guys are going to have to take care of it without the speed. So I would probably say bring in Spirit Host instead because then you get extra attack. So I would probably bring her in over uh, Diabolus at this point. But you're seeing this. This is level 15. All right. And these are all fights that these heroes normally just wreck. Like, if I was fighting this in, like, a Doom Tower fight, these fights would be just easy easy as pie. But now you can start to see how that speed boost is affecting your team. See how they're, they're having a little more trouble getting the, the turn meter to work? So having the speed lead, like Apothecary, is very good. Now, you could switch that by putting Spirit Host in your lead. And then she would be a speed boost. You get 10% speed. And that kind of negates a little bit the speed boost and turn meter that you're losing. All right, so we got the four hitter off. Now we've got poison sensitivity, but are they going to be able to do it? But this is how you're going to learn. You need to do the fight like this and test out different teams to see which ones work. Now, I've never used this team, just to be clear. I use this team actually, sorry, I use this team with Apothecary. And I think I used it, honestly, from stage maybe 12 to 14. I don't think I really used this team for 15 plus. I'm pretty sure they were only good through from 11 to 14. But I want you to see that this is an option. Obviously, it's not going well because we're at 15 and I didn't expect it to go too great. I figured they might win. I didn't think they would. I don't know when they were going to start losing with this because I didn't remember. I haven't played them in a while. But yeah, this team, obviously, now she's starting to get all the, all the hits. Now that they're getting low on HP, she's getting all her poisons out. Good job getting your extra turns. <laughs> Can they do it is the question. There you go. She got the decreased defense and the poison. And there you go. They actually did it. So this is, I wouldn't say this is a viable option for 15 because by the time you get here, your heroes aren't going to be this strong. So this was a, this is a, a showing basically of heroes that are high level that can withstand stuff that they normally wouldn't have been able to withstand. But yeah, up until 14, I would say this team would work. After that, you're going to need a healer. You're going to need somebody else besides Valerie that keeps your team safe. Fire Knight is really all about keeping everyone alive and having three heroes that can deal with the boss. That's, that's where Fire Knight starts to go awry around this point. So let's get out of this. And now we're going to head to 17. Now, my Fire Knight team is right here. Fire Knight 20. Now, we're not going to be using her. Actually, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, what do we want to do here? We wanted to bring... Yeah, we'll, we'll pull her out. All right. So, now we're in stage 17. Now, more than likely, at this point, you are not going to have Syl. It's possible. You might have her by now. This is stage 17. You're going to be pushing through. And this is when things start to change. Um, turn meter control becomes the most important thing in in 17. Um, moving from this point forward, turn meter control is basically your best friend. If you can't stop him from getting that shield up, it's going to be brutal unless you have a really good heal reduction. And even then, you're still going to be getting hit with the HP destroy every round, and it's going to start hurting you. So you definitely don't want that. So what we did, I believe, is we brought in this team. Now, you do have to do some team setup for this because, unfortunately for us, certain heroes in this team don't actually do stuff. So we're going to get this team going. Let's go down. We're going to start a new team. We're going to do this. We're going to do... What do we do? We're going to do this. We're going to do this, this, and this. So this is your Spider-17 team. So we're going to edit this. I mean, sorry, Knight. <laughs> Fire Knight. So now we're going to change the name. To Fire Knight. Ooh, I made a capital N. Fire Knight 17. All right. So we save that. So now the only changes you're going to have to make are Crimson Slayer and Soul Bond. Armager, you can leave the hell alone. It doesn't matter. So you go in here 
and you do flowing sword and you make it her first choice. All right, go to round two, flowing sword, first choice. Round three, flowing sword, first choice. Because you need her to do this skill. This skill at this point doesn't matter because the whole point of this is not to get the heal reduction. You can get it on there. It's fine. She's going to use it. And if it lands, then great. You get a 50% heal reduction, but it's not necessary for this fight. It just makes it go faster because you're not getting heals. Now, here on Soul Bond, we need a turn meter. So now if you have Cold cold Heart would be good for this. Um, Sill is obviously good for this. She has turn, turn meter reduction. There's Prosecutor that has turn meter reduction. There's a whole bunch of heroes that have turn meter reduction. So don't think that these are the only ones that can do it. These two just really are good at it. I mean, I would say Crimson Slayer is not that great at it, to be honest, but Solvon has a full depletion, so that's amazing. So that's first choice, all right? And then you go in Infused Arrow, second choice. So this is how you're going to set her up for any boss fight, because there's going to be a downside to this. And the downside to this is that for the boss, for the, for the waves, you're going to have Solvon using single target attacks which sucks because her main attack is a, oops, stop. You could change it to be where the first round is the AOE, but it, it, I don't think at that point it's even going to help you. So I just do it like this, and you have enough healing here to get you through it with the shields. So now we're going to save this, and we're going to go here and click that. Now, you want Apothecary to be in the lead at this point. All right, so by this time, you should have someone who can be a speed lead, and you should have somebody who is defensive. If you don't have Apothecary, find a hero that's def that's got a defense boost. You may not need it. If your heroes are strong and can get through it, then the defense might not be the most, you know, might not be something you need. You could just do attack and try to kind of beast your way through it. And that's fine too. Just know that it's a lot harder because defense is going to start to become really important. All right. And then you've got your extra heals between these two. And then these guys are all your turn meter reduction and damage. So let's start. And once again, Valerie with the shield set is a big deal because you get that shield back every turn. Now, Armager and actually all three of them, Armager, Soulbond, and Crimson are going to lower the turn meter of some of these enemies, which is going to help you because, as you can see, you're going to start getting pummeled by a lot of heroes. And this basically stops all of the heroes from attacking you at once, basically get, letting you get through the fight. The other thing is that Crimson Slayer has a sleep on her A1, so sometimes she might sleep somebody right before their turn, and they'll get their turn and then not get it. So that's the good news about Crimson Slayer. The only other problem is that somebody wakes them up usually. This is moving really fast. I mean, I'm used to two times speed being slower for some reason. But as you can see, they're doing a good job of this. They're able to get through the waves. They have the extra attack from Valerie, which is nice, even though... Armager doesn't really benefit from that so much because he's a defensive hero. And we've got a ton of defense on Apothecary. But you're starting to see the changeover as to what you need to progress in this. So up to 15, you're really going to be either looking for three hitters with heal reduction, possibly turn meter reduction if you've got it. It's not as necessary up to 14. And then you could use the poison method which does work up until 14 as you just saw it does work on 15 but you have to have pretty overpowered heroes or a good healer that's not Diabolus because she wasn't able to survive but like I said I don't have her in high defense she's literally one of the lowest defense heroes I have and she's only half level so you could have a hero that is high defense that could take that that spot you could even put Armager in her spot just for a little bit of turn reader reduction which will get you extra hits which will let you do the poison more because Armager will be there to lower the turn meter every time. So that is an option. You can use mixes of pretty much all of these heroes that I'm showing you. This is just all the strategies that I have personally used to get through this. Um, you could, like I said, you can also use, what's his name? Coffin Smasher, which lowers attack, so you're not getting so much outgoing damage onto your team, which also lets, it's gonna make the fight longer, but you're not gonna get hit for as much damage. But that's if you're having trouble surviving. Now, as you can see, this team, is more about keeping the turn meter down. That's their goal, is to make sure that this guy don't get a turn. And sometimes, see, he got the heal reduction, so now he only healed for half. Sometimes that's it. Sometimes that works. And if you have a bunch of heal reduction specialists, 
then you could literally just bring them in and he'll never heal. Literally never. As long as you can get the shield down with three hits, you're fine. There you go. He, Soul Bond just reduced turn meter. Now, from 17 on, things are going to get a little dicey. Now, this team, if I remember correctly, I don't know if this team beats 20. I think it does. I want to say that I did beat it with this team, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to push forward from 17 on. But the main point of this entire video is I want you to kind of see the progression of some of these dungeons. Because a lot of times it's just like, here's how you beat 17. And it's like, here's how you, here's the team you beat 15 with. And it's like, I kind of wanted to have something that really showed the progression of how your team is going to start going once you get into certain areas. And I'll review at the end. So there you go. Stage 17. This is the best way to take down the Fire Knight. I'm not saying these are the best heroes to do it, but this is the best way. Turn meter manipulation, where he doesn't get any turns, and hero reduction is literally not even needed anymore. All you got to do is get heroes that can do turn meter reduction, that have speed. You're going to probably, at this point, want to be pushing 170 to 200. That's about your speed you're going to want to be at. If you're not putting speed on your heroes, you will be failing dungeons. I don't care how strong your team is. If you're not fast and the boss is getting two turns to your one, you are wiped. So speed is really important at this point. 170 to 200 is where you're going to want to start pushing your heroes. Soul Bond's at 154 right now, but it doesn't matter because I have a speed lead that can boost speed and turn meter, and the rest of my team is in that speed range. So it's not like all of them need to be there. It just will make your fight way easier. If I had her at 200, this fight would be a joke because she would be getting even more of those turn meter reductions. All right? So this is the team to get you through 17. Now... 18 and 19, what could happen? Well, 18 isn't a big deal. I don't really need to show this one because it's they're the same affinity mostly. Uh, this is the spirit, see? So blue can, can jack him up and purple will basically be even. So you don't have to worry about that so much. As Soon as you get into 19, things start to get a little dicey. And the reason being is that if you haven't noticed, Blue, which is magic, is strong against spirit. So what's going to end up happening here is this team is going, is going to miss a lot because they will have poor accuracy. So we're going to fight it just to see how it goes. Now, if I remember correctly, I believe I beat it with this team. I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember if I had to bring somebody else in. I believe we beat 20, but we're about to find out. I believe we beat up to 20 with Fire Knight, but I'm not sure if it was... I don't know if I got Sill by the time this happened. And if that's the case, which I'm starting to think it is, that I had Sill possibly at this point. Actually, no, I think we beat this. I'm pretty sure we beat this before Sill. But this fight sucks. Let's just be clear. Like, this fight was horrible. Yeah, so there you go. You're starting to see that 18 is a lot different than what we just fought, all right? I might have had Sill. I think I had Sill in almost all of my... Yeah, I think I did have Sill in almost all of my 20 fights once we got here. So 19 is a little rough here. You could bring in another healer, but that's the problem is it's going to end up hurting you a little bit more, all right? So we're just going to pause this, get out, and battle, end. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch out someone. Now, Soul Bond is really good but mm, i don't know how i feel about it so we're going to stage select go back to 19 battle and we're going to go into team setup and we're going to go to fire knight 20. oops what i do there we go fire knight 20. so here's the team that we use we took out the healer and we put we put sill in here all right same setup with the skills on these two everything else is just go by itself so this, you have to have somebody who can do turn meter reduction. In this specific example, we're using Syl because by this point, you should have her, honestly. Like, by stage 19 and 20, if you're pushing 19 and 20 on any of these dungeons, you more than likely are have been playing for six months. Um, it's possible you're further along if you are pulling shards, unlike me, but it's also a high probability that you're just having trouble because you don't understand the fight. 
So now we're going to go in like this, and you can kind of see the difference. At this point, when Syl becomes your main healer, all right? Now, why is Syl good? Well, she's great, not just because she's a legendary, because she can stun, she heals, she drops the speed of the boss, she d drops turn meter of the boss, all right? The stuns is the big one, because now you have somebody who can crowd control. So if you were to replace Syl in this scenario, someone like Diabolus could be an option if you put her in a stun set. So you could find someone who AoEs, or even a healer that has an AoE, like a light AoE, like a Bissell. He's someone you could put in the stun set. Um, the Lamb guy, Lamber, whatever his name is. But those just I think those are Spirit, both of those. So you would probably want a Magic Affinity one. But anyone that has an AoE on their A1 that can stun would be an option here to replace Sill. Because then you're not getting hit with all that damage. And this team can handle themselves once they get to the boss. But this is what I was telling you, is that the waves become your enemy at these high levels. Because you're just not going to be able to get through them if you don't have turn meter control, shields, or something to keep your team from dying. Now, Valerie's a good option up until this point, but slowly fades out because of the damage output and because there's there wasn't enough crowd control. All right. So these are this is how the Fire Knight progresses the further along you go. All right. And I'm sure it's going to progress more once we get past stage 20. And once that happens, I'll probably make another video from stage 20 to 25. But Or maybe I'll just do a full video again and just erase this one. Who knows what I'll do. But as you are seeing now, they are getting us through this fight. And the good news is, it don't matter if they kill one of my heroes like that. It doesn't even matter because you've got Syl to take care of your heroes. See? And now she's back in action. And that really doesn't happen in the boss. Like, the boss fight is pretty much... You're pretty solid once you get into the boss fight. It's really just these freaking waves, because these guys are so tanky, and they do incredible damage. So, you want to control their turn meters as much as possible, or just take them out of the equation by stunning or sleeping them. Dropping speed doesn't hurt either. These are all the skills that, realistically, are going to be helpful to you in every dungeon, not just this dungeon. Ah, uh, the fun of Fire Knight. I still remember going through this and trying to beat this stuff. It was definitely something uh, something that got me angry for a little bit. There was, there was a few stages that gave me trouble. 15, I think, was the worst. All right, so now we're at the boss. You've got Syl, who's in Relentless, so she has extra attack. Sometimes she'll get an extra attack and do some get that shield down a little bit. There you go. See, extra turn. X turn. Now she's going to reduce turn meter, hopefully. There you go. And decrease speed. That's the best thing that could possibly happen in this case. So now the shield usually goes up on the first run because the first one is tough and goes by quickly. So you want to get that shield back down. Apothecary has a three hitter on his A1. She actually has, uh, still has a three, three hitter if you have her blessing, which is nice, or if you have the War Master Mastery. So now, as you can see, they're starting to miss. Now, hers hit, which is good. The goal here, if you're just trying to get through it, is this team may fail a couple times. It might happen, all right? But it's really going to be because you just had literally the worst luck on turn meter or just had really low accuracy, which my still has good accuracy. My armager has reliable accuracy, I will say. And the other two are kind of wishy-washy. So sometimes they'll miss, sometimes they won't. But as you can see, they have higher they have higher accuracy than I did have when I beat this. So they are landing it a little bit more. See, even armor gets resisted once in a while. There you go, turn meter. But that's when Sil comes in and hopefully at least gets one of those drops. And then the speed up from Apothecary will essentially give you Armager using his turn meter more. So if you got Armager up to, let's say, 200 to 250 speed, let's say you just decided to do that, this fight would be way easier. Like, mine's not even anywhere near, anywhere close to 250. I think my Armager's at, like, 180 or something, maybe 174. I don't really remember. But if your speeds are, are, are higher, you can beat these way quicker 
and you won't have to bring as many turn meter reductions in here because you will have Armager at super speed and you will have Sill at super speed. And just those two alone, if they're getting maybe one and a half to two turns more than the boss, then the turn meter is going to drop either way. And then you could possibly replace a reliable heal reduction in here just in case they you know, don't make something happen with the shield. And there you go. Soul Bond, dropping the turn meter to zero, resetting everything all over again. So you're starting to see how this has changed and evolved over the over the course of the fight. You know, in the beginning, you're literally just bullying the guy down. It doesn't matter what you got. You just hit him three, you hit him three to five times with each hero, and the boss drops. Turn meter reduction. It's the best thing in the world. It really is. Like, I was I was sleeping on turn meter reduction for a very long time until I finally understood it, and it took me getting angry at these fights for no joke, some of them a week, some of them a month, where I just could not beat certain fights. That's just the way of the world and how it goes. Oh, look at that. See, that turn meter is going back up. The, the goal here is that Soul Bond is going to be able to reduce it when it gets low. Because now we're on a dangerous territory. There you go. It's back up. And the goal here is to not get hit. And there goes Soul Bond's attack that she should have got off before. And there goes the heal reduction, because that's what happens sometimes. And a heal, which isn't going to help us. So now, there you go. Now we just got to make sure somebody gets a turn meter reduction, or otherwise we're getting hit with another shield, which we think we are. Yep, weak. There you go. Oh, we got a little turn meter, but I don't think it's enough. Shield goes back up. But this is why I was saying, on Magic Affinity, this team doesn't perform as well. Because they will get times where they're going to miss a ton like this. And if you're real, let's say you get really unlucky. Like you could lose the fight because of this. Luckily, she's she came in for the win there. Turn meter reduction twice. And now we got speed up. The boss still has speed down, which is even better. Because now he's slowed and he's getting his turn meter reduced. Oh, and all, the, all the resisting, it's, it's horrible. See, this is what this is what could happen, and no heal reduction, and there you go, missed again. That was like five misses in a row. See what I mean? This is why Magic Affinity sucks. <laughs> so don't be discouraged if you're on stage 19, and you're having you may have to fight the fight a couple times before you actually beat it. And you also have to remember is that there's no quest to beat stage 19. So if you want to auto this fight. Oh, see, they missed again. They're going to keep missing. Late to rest. Oh, uh, he got off the heel right at the last second. So you may want to you may want to manual it. It's There's nothing wrong with manualing this fight. This is on complete auto, just so you can see that it works. If you were to do this fight on manual, he'd be dead already, probably. But since you're waiting for these guys to do turns that they aren't doing the right skills, yeah, it's going to suck more. All right, so we finally got some turn meter reduction. Got to crease speed. Oh, and she missed the best thing that would have finished this fight. Turn meter reduction once again. See? He's just going to keep going until everyone's dead. And this is how you end up dying. But, yeah, I had trouble with this fight. I still have trouble with this fight. Like, I would never farm this one. There's really, there's zero reason to farm stage 19. It's a horrible fight. I just don't want you guys to get discouraged when you realize how hard this is. Now, if you have a magic affinity hero that has turn meter reduction, that's not still someone extra, you know, that would really help you. All right. I think they got it finally. There we go. They finally got it. But now you see why my best time is terrible. It's for eight minutes for stage 19. It's horrible. All right. Stage selection. But now you move into stage 20 where, as you can see, my best time is six, which still isn't great, but it works, all right? Now, it's the same exact team you just saw. I'm not going to play the fight again because it's pointless, but it's literally the same fight. It's the same hero, same team, same setup. Everything's the same. The only difference here is that now we're a strong affinity against him, all right? The only one that's not strong affinity against him would be Syl, and Syl is honestly your backup 
turn meter reduction. So it doesn't really matter. These three will be hitting their turn meter reductions now instead of her and him hitting it. These two will hit the most. It's just the way of the world. These two get resisted the most. Now it's going to be the opposite. With these, this this one gets resisted, but these guys are going to be okay, and they're going to get their turn meter reduction. This is where you're going to start seeing affinity really start to play into this game is around stage 17 because in the beginning it doesn't matter you're like i don't care like you literally just go in there and just beat on these guys but now affinity is actually going to affect your fight a lot because it's going to cause you to literally miss all of your debuffs that you're like oh my god i just destroyed this guy the last round why is he wrecking me now it's not because he got harder it's because he's the different affinity and you're using the wrong affinity that's really what's going to get you through it so that's stage 20, literally exactly what you just saw for 19, only this team is the right affinity now. So let's do a recap here just to kind of see what we talked about on the fire night. So from stage one, honestly, if you're building your Kale and your, your starting team that's really good, like Valerie and you know, Diablos and all them, you should be able to kind of fly through up to stage five. Once you understand it, um, in the beginning, you may not have heroes, so that could do three hit and you're going to get to fire Knight one and not be able to beat it. I mean, we're talking literally like the first time you have to fight fire Knight. All right. We're not talking, you know, two, three weeks into the game. We're talking literally like the first two days when you get to the fire Knight quest, you may have trouble beating stage one. I'm just letting you know. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you just don't have the right heroes probably at that point. And that's when you would start bringing in some other heroes. Like I'll show you the guy that you can use to get through the first few stages. Um, stage five is about where you can just bully your way through. From stage six on, it's recommended, not necessary, but recommended, um, that you start bringing in at least one hero that can do a three-hitter besides your starter champion. So you would have Kale and insert hero here, okay? Uh, that could be Coffin Smasher. That could be, what's her name, Crimson Slayer. It could be Aethel. I mean, there's a ton of heroes that have three hitters on their A1s. Literally just click on your heroes and see which ones have multiple attacks. As soon as you get to 10, this is, like I said, where you're going to start seeing a little bit of a difficulty shift where you're going to either need Heal reduction, turn meter reduction, or just insane poisons. Um, 11 to 14 is where you're going to start to see the difficulty ramp up. And I didn't have a good spirit affinity team at this point. You see, we went to force affinity at, at 13. So that's why my time, you can actually see where I struggled probably. Say here, 35, 32. This is all easy, 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 easy. We got one minute here, one and a half minutes. One and a half minute, one and a half minutes, and then boom, right here. So this is where you're going to start struggling. You're going to start seeing that the time is skyrocketing. And this was really just because I didn't have affinities. I didn't have, what's their name? I didn't have Spirit Host. <clears throat> sorry, not Spirit Host. I didn't have, yeah, Spirit Host or probably, what's her name? Crimson Slayer built at this point. I probably had neither one of them. I think maybe I had Soul Bond a little bit. I'm not sure. We'll see. I think so. I think I might have had her started, but I didn't have her built. Maybe. I'd have to look at my old videos. But I didn't have Crimson Slayer built because I actually did build her specifically for this fight to beat stage 15s and on. So this is when it started getting difficult because I didn't have the spirit affinities. And then I fixed that problem. And as you can see, because I fixed the problem here, I never fought it again. And I went right to 14 and started doing better. Okay. And then we got to stage 16, which was a little rough. We were able to beat it, but it just took frickin' forever. And this is the point when turn meter reduction starts to become your best friend. It's really at 15. 14 and down, poisons, heal reduction, and bullying with three hitters. 15 to 17, turn meter reduction is becoming your best friend. And then from 18 on, you need to make sure you're really paying attention to the affinity of your heroes. And you need to make sure they're landing everything, that they have a high accuracy, high speed, and that they can turn meter reduction the crap out of this boss so that it doesn't get any hits. Because heal reduction is a great idea, but unfortunately, if he keeps hitting you, I mean, as you saw on stage 19, they got dangerously close to getting killed. And that was only, what, five, six, seven hits maybe that we took? I don't even think it was that high. It was probably like five hits that we took from the boss. And it was right at the end. Maybe even four. 
So he can put up some damage. I would not recommend heal reduction being your main focus of the fight past seven, past 19. I would recommend just do as much turn meter reduction as you can possibly do. And that will also help you in stage 20. It'll make your, te your fight a little bit longer. But at the same time, if you can keep the turn meter down, you don't have to worry about him ever attacking you. And you don't ever need to heal. So it's kind of nice. All right. So that is the Fire Knight's Castle. Let's get out of here. Little thing here. You go into here. You go into Skinwalkers. And you go down here to Uncommon Heroes. And I believe it's this buddy. So this is for this is not for late game, guys. So don't put a comment here that says you're an idiot for liking Seder. Um He attacks one enemy. And then he's got a four-time hitter on his on his skill right there. If you feel like getting a bunch of copies of him. You could get it down to three turns, which would make your fight easier. That's up to you. But this guy is literally a hero that can get you through Fire Knight 1, 2, and 3. I mean, further, if you really want to build him, I wouldn't recommend it. I would just use him to get through your quests. And if you're still using him, then yeah, build him. But he's not hes not good. He's just good enough to get you through Fire Knight in the beginning if you're really hurting for a four time. And you don't even need attack on him. That's the best part. Build your heroes like you normally would, like all your other heroes. Build them really good. This guy, just throw as much HP and defense on him as you possibly can because you don't care how much damage he does. You want him to survive, and you want him to get that four-hitter off. That's it. So speed and defense that, and HP. Those are the only things that would matter on this guy unless you're actually going to try to build him. Okay? But Seder is a winner for Fire Knight if you're having trouble in the beginning of the game. And he's kind of cute, right? This is a face that only a mother could love, right? I want milk. No, I don't think he wants milk. That's weird. Let's get out of here. All right, guys. So hopefully this kind of explained a little bit of Fire Knight and how the progression of Fire Knight works. I know that a lot of people tr struggle on Fire Knight because of speed issues and because of the gear issues and just things like that. So I would say make sure you have a shielder. There's like the things to, to kind of walk away from this. Make sure you have someone who can shield your heroes at the later stages because you need to be able to stay alive or a reviver if that's something you've got. Um, someone who can really heal, shield, and revive is definitely a plus. You definitely want turn meter heroes, and you definitely want heroes that are a little more defensive in nature for that fight. Dragon, not so much. You can use people like War Maiden. You can use people like Kale. You can use people like uh, who else will we use in there? Uh, Spirit Host, Pop Carry, yeah, more def uh, go to that. What does her name? Grave Chill, um, Frozen Banshee. You can use heroes like that, but for Fire Knight, definitely like think more defensively if you want to survive the fight and actually get through it. All right, so if you have any questions, concerns, feel free to leave me a comment, like, subscribe, tell everyone that about me, tell them how much you love me. Tell them that, that we're the best channel ever and that we're going to start doing a lot more games. You know, just tell them anything. Maybe we'll even do a gaming podcast. This could be the next step. We'll see. So I'm Mobile Gamer Nerd. This is the Fire Knights Castle. And you guys take care. We'll see you next time.